Hello, and welcome back to London Cycle Routes. Today, I'll be showing you how to cycle from Stratford in East London to Barking. This ride takes about 35 minutes, and you can do the whole thing on quiet streets and protected cycle lanes. By public transport, the same journey takes around 25 minutes, but requires a change of line, so cycling is definitely a competitive way to make this journey. If you find this video useful, or you just enjoy watching it, then please don't forget to hit the bell icon and subscribe to the channel, as I try to post new videos just like it every week. And I'd also like to say a special thank you to everybody who supports the channel on Patreon. If you like what we're doing here, and you'd like to contribute as well, you can find the link in the description. Okay, let's get going. So we're starting outside Stratford Station, and we're gonna head down Great Eastern Road towards the junction with Stratford High Street. There is a decent network of relatively high quality protected cycle lanes in the streets around Stratford Station and the Stratford Centre. They help connect up a lot of routes in the area, and it would be great to see a similar treatment applied to other town centres. My only criticism is that you do have to wait at quite a lot of lights to get to where you need to go. In total, I count three sets of lights that we've had to go through in less than 100 metres to get to the side of Stratford High Street that we want to be on for this route. When we get here though, we join these segregated cycle lanes heading west down Stratford High Street. This is part of Cycleway 2, which is a TFL route that goes right into the city all the way from here. We're only going to be on it for a short time today, however, as we'll be turning off left in a moment at a street called Cam Road. The signposting is not great on the side roads here, so the way to remember it is that it's the street after the buzz bingo, just here. This street doesn't really go anywhere for cars, so traffic levels are quite low, although it does connect to some light industry, so you may see vans and such around. But we turn off it quickly down this path, which is called the Channel Sea Path. You might notice the blue and white shared space signs on here, which show that you're allowed to cycle here, but you're also sharing the path with pedestrians, so don't ride too quickly and make sure you give everybody plenty of space to get past. This path is actually on top of an old river called the Channel Sea River. The waterway is still here, it's just you can't see it because it's buried in a culvert underneath the path. The river was buried in 1958, which is quite a late year to be burying rivers as by that time it tended to have gone out of fashion. However, there was a lot of heavy industry in the area, including a chemical works and pumping station, which pumped 16 million tonnes of effluent into the Channel Sea River every year. So it probably wasn't very nice at the time it was covered. At the end of this path, we'll cross a road called Abbey Road. This is indeed the famous Abbey Road, not from the Beatles album, but from the DLR map. It's where the DLR station, Abbey Road, is located. And if you go to the platforms of that station, you'll find a special poster telling tourists that they've come to the wrong place and giving them directions to St. John's Wood. We've left Abbey Road behind now and we're climbing up these ramps to join the Greenway. For those that don't know, the Greenway is a major fixture of East London's geography, running from Victoria Park in the west to Beckton in the east. And you can cycle and walk along its entire length. Why is this path here? Well, given its elevated and very straight nature, you might be forgiven for thinking that it's a former railway, as there are a lot of paths like this in England that are former railways, but it's not. In fact, it's actually still in use for its original purpose, and that is a sewer. Yes, there is a major sewer running beneath this path. If you know your London geography well, the clue was that it ends at Beckton in the east, because Beckton, if you've ever looked at Google Maps, is a site of London's largest sewage works. In fact, it's actually the largest sewage treatment plant in Europe. The sewer beneath our wheels is called the Northern Outfall Sewer, and it was designed by famous Victorian civil engineer Joseph Bazalgette. The Metropolitan Board of Works, which looked after London's water supply back in the day, decided to build the sewer after two events. One was a major outbreak of cholera in 1853, and the second was the Great Stink of 1858. This latter event involved extremely hot weather 
exacerbating the smell of poo in the rivers. Interestingly, the Victorians believed at the time that bad smells such as this actually spread disease through a mechanism called miasma, which was actually mistaken. So there was an element of misunderstanding in building the sewers, but it did stop sewage being dumped in the Thames, and it also stopped further cholera outbreaks. So I think it's fair to say that it was definitely worthwhile. Another reason it's definitely worthwhile is because it creates a great walking and cycling route all the way through East London. You can see that this part of the path has been recently renewed and the tarmac is nice and smooth. It also has a really nice grass verge along it which some people are using on a lovely hot day such as this. If you were wondering, I actually filmed this video at the end of July and have had the footage sitting around for a while which explains the very nice weather. That's also why the quality of this video isn't quite as good as the last one as it was shot on my old camera, although I have scaled it up to 4K to trick YouTube into giving us a better bitrate. You can leave the greenway at any of these roads and a few ramps, and if you were to leave at Ballam Street and turn right, you would end up at Plasto, or more specifically, the north end of the high street known as Barking Road. You might notice that this end of the path is in much better nick than the first bit we went through when we came on at Stratford. Judging from the works vehicles parked in the path there, I think it's been renewed as well, so hopefully it should all be brought up to the same high standard. The path is relatively wide the whole way and also has street lighting along it which is crucial if you're using it as a commuter route in the dark, particularly in the winter. It is of course shared with pedestrians, so make sure you don't ride too quickly down it and be courteous and give everybody a wide berth. One drawback of the route is that when it crosses roads it doesn't tend to have priority over them and instead you're given a toucan crossing, that's a button operated crossing which you're allowed to cycle and walk over. These are fine for ensuring a safe crossing over the road, but waiting for them can be a little bit annoying. Obviously, remember that if there is a gap in the traffic, it's completely legitimate for you to cross, even on a red man, just as you would if you were a pedestrian. Of course, make sure it's safe before you do so. If you looked closely at the map at the beginning of the video, you'll see that we're actually doing a bit of a dogleg here, as Barking is pretty much due east from Stratford, but we're going well south of Barking. Near the end of the video, we'll then be heading up north again, so doubling back on ourselves a little bit. While this does look slightly indirect on a map, I do still think it's the best way to go because it lets you take advantage of the greenway. Of course, there are the safety and comfort benefits of riding on a path away from the road, but we're also just going a lot faster than if we were going on roads and stopping at traffic lights and junctions for other vehicles. The other streets between Stratford and Barking are also a bit of a state for cycling, and really no infrastructure has been put in or worked done on them to make them suitable for people to cycle between the two town centres. So this is definitely the best way to go, I think. This is probably a good time to say that if you're enjoying the video, make sure you hit subscribe on the channel and also hit the bell icon next to it to ensure you're alerted when I post new videos. I think some people maybe don't know what the subscribe button does, so just to clarify, it just means that videos from this channel will appear on your homepage when you look at YouTube. It's a great free way to support the channel, as does hitting the like button and leaving a comment underneath, both of which boost the video in YouTube's algorithm. And if you really like the channel, you could consider throwing us a few quid on Patreon. There's a link below the video for that, and thank you very much to everyone who already does. We're coming to the end of the Greenway now, and in the next section of the video, we're going to be working our way up through quiet streets before crossing the North Circular and going into Barking Town Centre. We're approaching a junction now, which is essentially a large on-ramp for Newham Way, which is basically a motorway. First, we'll have to negotiate this two-stage Toucan Crossing. Just a warning that pedestrians and cycles are massively deprioritised at that crossing, and it can take several minutes for the lights to change. So if you do have a safe opportunity to cross, then make sure you take it. You'll now find yourself on a relatively decent two-way cycle track, 
which is nicely removed from the road that it runs alongside. Unfortunately, there's quite a lot of foliage encroaching on the path, so if that could be cut back to a more sensible width, we'd gain a lot more space. Because of that, be particularly vigilant as you negotiate these blind corners, as people coming in the opposite direction could run into you if you're not careful. Thankfully, we're not staying by Newham Way for very long, and you'll want to take the first turning into Maysfield Gardens. The streets we'll be riding on for the next few minutes are very quiet, and that's because there isn't really a through route for cars through them, thanks to a series of bus gates and modal filters in the area. As a result, you could say that this area was an unofficial low traffic neighbourhood, although the measures predate the term by a number of years and possibly even decades. The route through these streets might be a little bit difficult to remember, so if you need to download a map of the route, then you can find a link in the description below the video. You'll be able to download a GPS GPX file there, and that'll work on whatever app or device you want to use. If you want to get your bearings of where we are, we're currently east of East Ham and north of Beckton, and we're approaching Barking from the southwest. Generally, the traffic levels on these roads are quiet enough that you could cycle here with children, or someone who wasn't a confident cyclist. However, while riding around, I did run into a few cars here and there. There might be a few reasons for that. Firstly, there's a council depot somewhere on these streets, so that's occasionally visited by vans, lorries, and other traffic. There's also a school, which can generate traffic at peak times. Also, while this area is generally pleasant for cycling, those connections don't really extend to other town centres nearby that people might need to get to. And there's also not particularly great public transport. So a lot of people will be driving journeys that in other areas will be served by public transport or cycling. If the local council here wants to improve that situation, they could fix the next part of the route, which could be, with a little bit of work, a really handy route into the centre of parking, which is the nearest town centre here. As it stands, it's not brilliant. I'll show you why. Don't miss the turning to the right of the school here, which is a path that's very, very easy to miss. Also, even if you don't miss it, you'll probably have to dismount to get around this chicane, which is frankly horrible and probably illegal under the Equality Act. This path runs right next to a school, so it's potentially a really useful route for children to commute in on. Unfortunately, it's in a very poor state of repair. Most obviously, the surface is terrible and needs to be redone, you really need to keep an eye out to make sure you're not going to hit a pothole and go flying face first into the ground. But secondly, there's a lot that could be done just to make it a much more pleasant ride. Firstly, the lighting is quite intermittent here. But secondly, the high security fences just make it feel a little bit claustrophobic, especially on your own at night. Opening these up and maybe taking better care to clear the leaves and putting in some planting could make this a really, really nice route to get to Barking on. Now, at the T-junction we're coming to in a second, I turn left and use a bridge, but I'm told there is also another bridge if you go right, which may have fewer steps, so it might be worth checking that out if you're going to do this route regularly. Both these bridges go over the North Circular Road, which basically severs Barking Town Centre from the streets and the school which we just went past. Unfortunately, there's another horrible chicane here, and for some reason when I came here, there was a guy burning what looked like mushrooms on a fire. I'm not really sure what he was doing. Unfortunately, this section of the route you have to dismount for. There were very shallow steps, so most people shouldn't have too much problem getting their bike up here, but it seems like a really wasted opportunity to make this fully accessible. All that needed to have been done would really have been to make that ramp a little bit longer, and people, including disabled cyclists who cannot dismount, would be able to cycle directly up the bridge. There's also a pointless step just here, which means that you can't quite cycle along the whole length of the bridge, although you can cycle on this section where there is a full ramp. You are allowed to cycle on here, by the way. At the entrance, there is a little shared space sign which indicates as such. If you're going to use the other bridge by turning right at the T-junction, which I think doesn't have any steps, you can take that and then turn left onto Fleet Road and join us here at Drydock Square. This bridge here is relatively fine to cycle over, although it could probably benefit from a traffic filter as it runs parallel to a massive A-road which is used to access the North Circular. 
Now, hopefully soon, you'd be able to continue straight across on this path, but it looks closed off. So we're going to go slightly around it, find the dropped curb here, and then use this path to cross the small parkland. You can see the little shared space sign on the left there. And we're going to squeeze down here and use the Toucan Crossing to cross the road. Unfortunately, with that path closed, it is a bit of a squeeze, but it's still fine, basically, as long as you don't run into anybody else coming the other way. Next, we're crossing Abbey Green, where you can find the ruins of the old Barking Abbey. The paths are relatively wide here, but it is also a popular walking route, so make sure you watch out for pedestrians. We're heading for that clock tower in the distance, which has just disappeared behind the tree. As you probably gauged, the route connecting the Greenway to Barking is a little bit cobbled together from what's available, and with a little bit of work, it could be a much better cycling route, connecting Barking into London's main cycling network, which goes right into the centre. Don't forget, the Greenway connects well to Cycleway 2, which we joined at Stratford, and that also goes right into the City of London and connects to other routes. If you want to see how to get in from Barking to Central London, I did do a Barking to Bank video, which connects all that up. But I really think that the section between Barking and the Greenway or even just barking and the quiet streets around Flanders Road would be a really, really worthwhile investment in improving active travel links to this great town centre. And if you've never been to barking, I really recommend it. I actually really like it. Up on the left, there's really quite a good market. And these main streets, Ripple Road and later Station Parade, both have bus gates on them, which is why there's not really very much traffic and just buses. I decided to dismount at the end of Ripple Road here and just cross to the station on foot, but you're perfectly capable of riding by bike down this street as well. I am just pushing my bike here by the way, not riding down the pavement. But yeah, that's Barking Station dead ahead of you with the nice modernist roof. So we've made it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you made it this far, don't forget to hit like and to hit subscribe. And if you really enjoy what we're doing on the channel and you want to contribute, there's always a link to the Patreon underneath. You can see from the map here that it would be really useful to have a much more direct route that would cut the corner and the dog leg which we took from going down the greenway. Unfortunately, there isn't much in the way of cycling infrastructure on these roads, so for now, this will have to do. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again next time.